Okay, greetings Singularitarians, back to our reading of Ray Kurzweil's book, The Singularity is Near. We already made it through page 24, discussing the basic concept of the singularity. He compared it to a black hole. We don't know it, but we can see its impact. And today we will discuss an interesting question, namely explicitly the question of exponential growth and how exponential growth will at some point occur as an incredibly disruptive event to us. Now, this question may be interesting to you, especially when you're investing money at the stock market. There are always the two options. Do you invest in value or do you invest in growth? Right now, the tech uh, stocks have gotten like some pullbacks, of course. But, you know, in the past, of course, value and tech hold about the same, held about the same balance. So didn't make much signif significant, significantly much more money if you invested in tech than in value. Value stocks like Domino's Pizza, which totally outperformed the market, or Warren Buffett investing in ketchup because we always will eat ketchup. But there is an idea of exponential growth exploding at some point that it will be so rapid that it resembles a complete disruption. And we will listen here to a snippet of an interview of um, Joe Rogan with Ben Gertzel just to get an idea what we are talking about. So let's listen to that. It would happen, but the basic concept of the technological singularity is a point in time when technological advance occurs so rapidly that to the human mind it appears almost instantaneous. Yes. Like, like imagine ten new Nobel Prize winning discoveries every second or something, mm -hmm. right? So, this is similar to the concept of the intelligence explosion that was posited by the mathematician I.J. Good in 1965. What I.J. Good said then, the year before I was born, was the first truly intelligent machine will be the last invention that humanity needs to make, right? Right. So this right. is an so this intelligence, is an intelligence explosion, explosion. Okay. Okay. is another, is another term. term for basically the same thing as a technological... So here you know, we get the main concept. <laughs> I have AI to stop it. <laughs> so, okay, I'm, I'm still wrestling with technology. Nevertheless, now you should hear me again. So this is the major idea that exponential growth will occur to be so vast at some point that to human beings it occurs as a disruption. And the other idea is, of course, that computers, when they start improving themselves, they will just improve the process of how we make discoveries and then it will be like, 10 Nobel Prize winners making 10 Nobel Prize worthy discoveries in 10 seconds? I don't know. So yeah, let's, let's look into the concrete text to discuss that a little bit more specifically. Uh, John van Neumann already said that the ever accelerating progress of technology gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race beyond which humanist affairs as we know them could not continue. So the major idea here is that the event of the singularity, which is a concept that Jan van Neumann coined, will be just disruptive. It will really touch the question of what is our humanity. And just to say, John von Neumann, he came up with this concept, but the, the great uh, achievement of Ray Kurzweil is that he actually tried to pinpoint what this, when the singularity will occur, and he made a lot of statistical analyses and so on and so forth. So 
von Neumann makes here two important observations, which is acceleration and singularity. And Ray Kurzweil focuses on the first idea, that is that human progress is exponential. That means it repeatedly <laughs> multiplies by a constant. And it is not just a constant that we add, as we say, see here, but that it is really rising. I mean, you are all familiar with the concept of exponential growth. Important point at the knee of the curve, it is deceptive. We don't recognize that it is exponential growth. And we may be in this situation right now. So the second idea is that exponential growth is seductive, starting out slowly and virtually unnoticeable, but beyond the knee of the curve, it turns explosive and profoundly transformative. I saw another interview between Kurzweil and Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Neil deGrasse Tyson said, I'm your biggest critic. I'm your biggest critic. And Ray Kurzweil said, well, you're probably not the biggest. And he explained to deGrasse Tyson that the reason for why he doesn't understand him is that probably intuition is in his way. We cannot imagine the future. Imagination is too limited for the explosion of technological growth that we will see. That at least is the claim of Ray Kurzweil. Today, we anticipate continuous technological pro progress and social repercussions that follow. But the future will be far more surprising than most people realize, because few observers have truly internalized the implications of the fact that the rate of change is itself accelerating. So I wonder if he means here that exponential growth is exponentially growing? But what would that mean? It would mean k as a constant to the power of n to the power of n. But that would just mean k to the power of 2n. My math classes have been very long ago, but I think it's right. Maybe not. Inform me in the comments. Uh, so. He says further that we usually underestimate the future development and that is why what he calls the intuitive linear view of history rather than the historical exponential view. And his models show that we are doubling the paradigm shift rate every decade. So thus the 20th century was gradually speeding up to today's rate of progress. Its achievements therefore were equivalent to about 20 years of progress at the rate in 2000. We make another 20 years of progress in just 14 years by 2014 and then do the same again in only seven years. To express this another way, we won't experience 100 years of technological advance in the 21st century. We will witness on the order of 20,000 years of progress or about 1,000 times greater than what we than what was achieved in the 20th century. <laughs> so yeah, my intuition cannot follow here. Let's just say the technological advancement will be tremendous. And he gives us now different examples where people were underestimating the incredible growth that we are going to face. He says, a Nobel Prize winning panelist dismissed safety concerns regarding nanotechnology, procla proclaiming that we're not going to see self-replicating nano-engineered entities for a hundred years. And Ray Kurzweil here agrees with him, but only when measured at today's rate of progress. And then he says, but because we're doubling the rate of progress every decade, we see the equivalent of of a century of progress at today's rate in only 25 calendar years. So the book was written 2003. That means by 2028, we should have these self-replicating nanobots. I don't know how far we are in this progress, but here we can actually double check his 
predictions. Maybe not with regard to that, because let's give him seven more years. But here's an interesting example that he brings uh, about he, he attended a conference, the Future of Life conference 2003. And one of the, um, I think one of the inventors of the DNA, yeah, actually it says it. Virtually every presenter looked at the progress of the last 50 years and used it as a model for the next 50 years. For example, James Watson, I have to sneeze. <laughs> James Watson, that's the guy we're talking about. So James Watson, the co-discoverer of DNA, said that in 50 years, we will have drugs that will allow us to eat as much as we want without gaining weight. And that's tremendous, right? So we can even eat more ketchup, so invest in ketchup. Um, and Ray Kurzweil replied, 50 years we have accomplished this already in mice by blocking the fat insulin receptor gene that controls the storage of fat in the fat cells. Drugs for human use are in development now and will be in FDA tests in several years. This will be available in 5 to 10 years, not 50. Now, this was 2003 when he made these statements. So it should have been available in 2008 to 2013. So this mark has been missed. Now, what does that say? Does it mean that Ray Kurzweil is wrong? It seems it's incredibly difficult to predict the future. The singularity is, in my mind, a thought experiment about a possible future that we should, of course, risk. We should risk that thought experiment. We should think about such a future. And Ray Kurzweil does that, and he tries to understand the consequences of exponential growth. But still, such thinking can be flawed. And we don't know what will happen in the future. It may be that our technological progress just hits a wall and that we don't make progress beyond that anymore. Many people assume that in the future we will travel faster than the speed of light, which should be necessary if we really want to move out into the universe. But it could be that according to our physical limitations, we will never be able to travel faster than light. And then every time I say something like that, somebody crawls out of the corners of the internet and he says, but everything is possible. Forgive me my childishness. Everything is possible. If everything is possible, it should also be possible that not everything is possible. So the possibility claim does not have empirical evidence for it. Certainly there is a lot possible, but is everything possible within the universe? Is it possible that a moon jumps, a, moon, a cow jumps over the moon? That's the famous example, right? Yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, let's, not, let's not get into discussions about questions of modal logic, but it is possible that not everything is possible. So does that discredit, however, anything that Kurzweil says? Well, you shouldn't make too self-certain, self-confident predictions. Making these predictions is a part of empirical science. We need these and we need to be, we need the allowance to err. Also with regard to empirical predictions. His predictions are genuine because he uses data to make these predictions. It's not just like a Jules Verne, Jules Verne fantasy, right? And he hints us here at a tremendous problem, namely the problem of our intuition to predict the future. Therefore, he writes, people intuitively assume that the current rate of progress will continue for future periods. And the question is also, 
is this wrong? So he presents that here as something that is ridiculous, harmful, wrong. But the most successful predictions about the future in the past were predictions in which somebody extended an existing trend. They were the most successful. So fantasizing about the future may be a problem. I'm not saying that Rick Kurzweil does that, but he may fall for that trap. So from the mathematician's perspective, the reason for this is that an exponential curve looks like a straight line when examined for only a brief duration. We said that before, and this is where our intuition kicks in and where we just expand or extend this particular kind of growth. But a serious assessment of the history of technology reveals that technological change is exponential. The acceleration of progress and growth applies to each one of them. Here he means, I believe, technological advancement as well as biological advancement. So if we look back in history of how our organisms have developed, that was also underlying the laws of exponential growth, as Kurzweil claims. Indeed, we often find not just simple exponential growth, but double exponential growth, meaning that the rate of exponential growth is growing exponentially. Now, this, this is what we have to look into further. I'm not entirely sure what exponentially exponential growth is. I think it's still exponential. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess we can have very high exponential growth compared to very low exponential growth, maybe. It seems, however, that any exponential growth at some point hits it's something that occurs to us as an explosion because we still have then limited human minds. This so far on this topic, so we finished page 27 today, we make it like now into page 28, so we have been a bit faster. The question that I wonder about today is, um, how do you invest your money? In growth or in value? And do you think that the, the idea of the singularity should have an impact on our investment strategies as a singularitarian? Well, maybe you give me a tip in what you invest if you expect the singularity. So that, having that said, thank you very much for listening to this episode of my readings of Ray Kurzweil. If you want to follow further episodes on this topic, then subscribe, hit the bell icon, give me a like, look into my other channels, give me money. <laughs> <laughs> of course, everybody wants to make money, right? So I hope you make money too. Live long and prosper. <laughs>